In my 40s, I was the fitness director at a club with three locations, and I was teaching in kinesiology at Iowa State University. I was working about 60 hours a week teaching two fitness classes a day, and I'd started doing my own triathlon training. I was in what I thought was the best shape of my life. As satisfying as all that work was, I was only able to reach about 200 people a week, and I knew the importance of the positive influence of fitness on life and on health, and I wanted to reach more people. I took a risk at 49. I left the safety and security of that stable paycheck to start my own online fitness business, Flipping 50. I was all in. I jumped with both feet. The day after I turned in that resignation letter, I panicked. I tossed and turned thinking, how am I going to pay for my son's college tuition? And what if I don't reach more people than I reach no people? What if I'm out of money in six months? I felt so much pressure to make that business work. I barely let myself away from the computer. I was designing my website, designing the copy for the website, figuring out what videos I was going to sell on that website. And I went from a person who exercised 10 or more hours a week to someone whose sole source of stable exercise was walking her old English sheepdog, Truman, around the block. On top of that, a 10-year relationship with the man I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with fell apart. I hadn't seen it coming. I was devastated. It gets worse. There was a whole lot money, more money going out than coming in, and I had to put my house up for sale. I had insomnia anxiety, and hot flashes. I had every indication that menopause was right around the corner. Great. So imagine my surprise when months later I'm editing these online videos and looking at the woman in the screen and I barely recognized her. It was me. And I actually looked better than a year ago when I thought I was in the best shape of my life, I looked leaner, stronger. I was healthier looking. I was like, what? How can that be? That flies in the face of everything I had been taught and everything I taught. As a senior lecturer in kinesiology with 30 years of fitness research as a strength and conditioning coach. So I dug into the research to find out what had happened for me. And this is what I found. I had been doing everything wrong. In fact, most women are doing everything wrong and following recommendations for exercise based on men. And men have very different metabolisms, body composition, and hormones than women. In fact, did you know, only 39% of all exercise research features females. That's according to the European Journal of Sports Science. We can reason that only a small fraction of that features women in any phase of life. For instance, perimenopause, menopause, or menopause. Who is featured? Most often, it's young athletic males in the peak of their muscle mass. Whatever makes us think that what works for young athletic men in the peak of their muscle mass, will work for a middle-aged woman in menopause, essentially at the peak of her fat storage. No wonder women have a hard time getting in shape, no matter how hard or how much they exercise. I began to realize that most of what I learned, though true, was really bad advice for women. I dug into exercise fitness in women and found that it's not just the fitness profession that's steering us wrong and confusing us, but it's also what we learned from our parents and our influencers growing up. I interviewed middle-aged women about what they learned about exercise and fitness growing up. 
One woman remembered running home from school when she was nine or 10. Her mother was waiting. Karen, what's wrong? Why are you so out of breath? I ran all the way home from school. Oh, Karen, girls don't do that. Whoa. Imagine the lessons being taught there. Number one, if you're out of breath, something's wrong. Number two, girls don't run. This is double jeopardy. And this is why so many women struggle to lose weight, to get rid of belly fat, or just to improve their fitness level. No wonder I hear from middle-aged women almost every day, nothing I do seems to work anymore. Do you want the good news? There's a solution to all this. And it's not more exercise. It's less exercise. It's not less food. It's more food. What? I know you must be thinking right now, you are crazy. Hear me out. I've now had the privilege of helping over 150,000 women change their minds, their energy, and their bodies to get the energy they want by exercising less and eating more. My favorite success story is Jennifer. But she didn't start out that way. She resisted everything that I suggested when we first met. Jennifer was a diabetes educator, which means she was very familiar with the benefits of exercise and the evils of sugar. In fact, when we met, she was getting up at 3 a.m. to exercise before work. And then often she would leave work to exercise for a couple more hours. And if you can believe it, she was eating fewer than 1,000 calories a day, most days. And this went on for years. Jennifer's weight had yo-yoed over the years. And at once, she, she had lost 100 pounds. And she was determined to do it again. When I suggested, let's exercise less and eat more, she wasn't having it. It flew against everything she'd learned her entire life. My heart and respect went out to Jennifer. She was totally committed, and she was doing everything she thought were all the right things. But it wasn't working, she wasn't sleeping, and she was frequently ill or injured. She very reluctantly agreed to follow my recommendations for 10 weeks. Fast forward 10 weeks. There is no extreme weight loss story here. But she wasn't exercising hours a day. She wasn't starving herself anymore. And she hadn't gained weight that she feared she would. At what was really the start of Jennifer's success story, she was already feeling better. Not so fast forward, six years. Jennifer lost and kept off 90 pounds. She's taken up golf. And right now, at age 66, she's learning to swim just because she can. A good day is no longer what the scale tells me. It's whether or not I can play 18 holes, she tells me every day. Bingo. That's what it's all about. Doing the things we love with the people we love to do them with when we want to do them. And that reminds me a lot of Linda. Linda was a nurse getting up at 3 a.m. to do her 12-hour shifts. She was exhausted on her days off, but she was making matters worse because she was exercising for hours a day on the treadmill trying to lose that menopause weight. I said, Linda, those 12-hour shifts, those are your workout. They're a marathon. You're bending, you're lifting, you're carrying. On your days off, what you need to do is what I call restore before more. She said, what? I put Linda on a treadmill elimination diet. I said, if you want to walk, walk with your husband after dinner. When I saw Linda again a few weeks later, she said, you will never believe what's happened. I'm still walking after dinner with my husband, and it spilled over to our son, we're now hiking on the weekends together as a family. I quit the treadmill and lost weight and found my family. And that is often an unexpected benefit of exercising less. You free up time 
whether it's for yourself or it's to strengthen relationships with people you love. How about you? And by the way, if you're a man sitting here, think about a woman in your life. Your mother, significant other, or a sister. Do you find that the more you exercise, the more tired you get? Do you find that no matter what you do or how hard you work, you cannot get the results that you want? Maybe you too are following recommendations intended for someone other than you. When you honor yourself, you will get the results that you want. I have two suggestions. If you are frustrated and exhausted, like Jennifer or Linda, no matter what you do, you can't get results. For two weeks, follow my advice. Exercise less. Just cut it in half. Do half the running, half the Zumba, half the weight training. And restore before more. Instead of that long run all by yourself, Go for a run or a walk with a friend. Go to a yoga class. Ask a family member to shoot hoops. I'm exhibit A about the difference between exercise and movement. I've trained for eight Ironman triathlons. That is a formula of a lot of intensity and a lot of volume, and you have to do it in order to complete one. But in all that triathlon training, my weight and my percent body fat before and after have been virtually the same. So if you think it's about more intensity and more exercise, I have taken one for the team and you can dismiss all that. But there was one training experience that was different. My fitness level was better, my endurance was better, and I just had a more athletic look. The difference that year was that I was also fulfilling my role as golf mom. I was doing the triathlon training as usual, but I was also traipsing around nine and 18 hole golf courses following my son. Now, if you know golf, you know that this is not power walking. This is long, slow, all day activity and I loved it. It was my favorite golfer. It was outdoors, and it was a rare connection to my past. My stepfather had been an avid golfer. His last name was Palmer, and I'd be willing to bet you could guess his nickname. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you don't need intense exercise, because in our contemporary sedentary lifestyles, and in your middle and older age, you absolutely do. But not according to a formula for exercise, according to anyone but you. If you remember two things from this day and this speech, remember this. Ask everything about your exercise. Is it making me feel better or making me feel worse? And two, consider me. I went from hours of teaching classes a day and doing my own workouts to minutes of appropriate exercise to get leaner and stronger and healthier. When you honor your body and the unique needs you have in this moment, you will get results in the mirror, on the scale, and in your life, and finally be creating the life full of energy that you want, need, and deserve. And what I found may work for you too. Exercise less and restore before more. Thank you.